Toronto Maple Leaf General Manager Kyle Dubas. Uh, Kyle, I don't know if you've heard our conversation, but the big question now is, given yeah, the fact... I have been, uh, <laughs> you guys have done all my work for me. I'm, yes, I'm we good. have. Actually, we've done none of your work for you. Well, you. You've heard what the question is. The question is, once you get Marner signed somewhere around $10 million, unless you can somehow work out a bridge deal with them, you're going to be spending $40 million on four players, roughly. How do you manage putting together a team that can challenge for the Cup when half of your money is spent on four players? Well, um, I think that's that's really what I'm going to be judged on in the end, and and uh, whether I'm a good general manager or not, and and whether we've we forecasted this correctly, and whether we've planned correctly, is our ability to to manage our situation here. So, um, I'm I'm uh, I'm very uh, I think uh, excited about the work that we've done, and uh, I'm I'm enthused about the amount of preparation we've put into this. It hasn't just been anything off the cuff. We've we've put a lot of work into how it's going to all pan out and play out, and and um, I'm not worried about that one bit. Hey, Cal, it's uh, it's Pierre LeBron. I'm wondering if you could walk us through when in sure. this process it started to make sense to you um, as a team to not go the max eight with Austin Matthews, given the different AV that would be involved there when you really started to focus on something that'd be a little shorter. Uh, I, I think, Pierre, that uh, that shift, you know, we, we had talked throughout about different terms and trying to find different fits throughout. And um, I think really uh, as we as we sat down uh, with Judd beginning, uh, I guess, mid-January or late January, we started to have more meaningful uh, discussions uh, about progressing this and, and moving it ahead. And, and that's really when I, I think we all just felt most comfortable with um, you know, not obviously a, a so-called bridge contract, but also not a um, not the max term deal, and, and just finding something that would be equitable and fair and fit for everybody. So I would say in the last month or so, we kind of found that range and, and proceeded from there. Kyle, we've just been discussing the various options you have with Mitch Marner now that you've got to get him signed, and his agent has already said they don't want to talk until the end of the regular season. Uh, it seems to be to us mm -hmm. impractical to think that you could sign up for a similar deal with. Matthews being a five-year deal so then you have to consider longer term or maybe a two or three-year bridge are you swaying one way or another right now to make this work you guys don't enjoy anything we're <laughs> we're celebrating Austin's uh, contract and <laughs> holy man you uh, listen when when it comes down to we'll go through the same process with with Darren and and with Mitch and, and his family guys we'll we'll have this full discussion with them and and present where we're coming from and then and then we'll go from there so uh, I've known Darren for for a long time and uh, you know and, and being here with Mitch uh, you know for, for especially, especially for this year in the role that I'm in but even going back the last few seasons uh, you know he's, he's just an outstanding uh, person and, and a great Toronto Maple Leaf he comes to the rink every day with so much enthusiasm and love for the game and and is obviously a great player for us so we'll, we'll get that figured out um, the timeline is, is t you know it's got to be something the player is totally comfortable with so uh, we'll, we'll continue to, to uh, you know to obviously keep tabs there but um, you know certainly at the end of the season we'll we'll uh, we'll get down to business there and, and progress but there shouldn't be any pressure on Mitch at all all. We're we're gonna we'll work away at it and get that done. Kyle, it's Darren Dreger. I'll let you loosen your tie and breathe a little <laughs> bit with this softball. I, I mean, you do deserve some credit as an organization as well for looking at the lower end of the spectrum and you know signing Callie Rosen to a two-year contract or Trevor Moore to a two-year contract. I mean, those players will very likely be Toronto Maple Leafs. So it's not just about the high end of the scale. You have to manage and make sure that you develop accordingly as well. Well, and we, we've talked about this, Darren, with our with our scouts and with our departments. I think when when you're finishing uh, very low in, in the standings and you're picking high, a lot of people focus on the draft. But if anything, now the the draft and our free agent department and and different elements, and, and in particular our player development department, with led by Scott Pellerin and then Sheldon Keefe, uh, that's going to become vital for us. And I think you, you mentioned two players; uh, they came to us as free agents: Trevor Moore and Callie Rosen. Uh, Jim Pagliafito, who's our senior director of player evaluation, did a great 
great job identifying them and then recruiting those players to come here. And uh, we're very confident, and in, in, they've both shown it at separate times over the last couple of years, that uh, certainly they're excellent American Hockey League players. They're all-stars at that level. Um, but now they're they're transitioning to becoming full-time Maple Leafs. So uh, we're fortunate to have them uh, signed and secured. It gives them some some certainty and and certainly for us some some excellent young depth that's that's homegrown. So we have to really continue to do that. I, I don't think that uh, if we don't reach our potential, it's not going to be because of the players at the high end of the roster. It's in the end, it's going to come back to to me and our player personnel department being able to fill in around the uh, uh, fill in around the the edges of that core group that Gino referenced right off the top that are going to take up a lot of our cap. Uh, and and that's uh, that's something that we're excited about and, and we do a lot of work on and have even before today and, and going back to the summer. Kyle, our insiders tell us that this deal has been pretty close for quite a while now. Did that help you knowing that you had Austin Matthews virtually done for a little while now? Did that help you make the Jake Muzzin deal saying let's bolster this roster right now so we can get two full playoff runs out of Muzzin knowing that we're going to get six out of Austin Matthews? Yes, it did. So once once we had a, a, a you know some somewhat of a, a certain range that it was going to fall into and and where we were where we were going to settle on uh, whether the, whatever the term was going to be, but certainly on these uh, on these mid range terms, not max term and not bridge, um, that allowed us to really pick up our efforts on the trade front. So um, for for us, it's something that we appreciate uh, with with Austin and, and Judd doing is you know and and they've. Uh, They've been great in, in helping us on that front. So w without knowing where they were going to be at, it's kind of tough to add a guy that's going to uh, be tough that's going to add a guy that's got some, ter some, uh, some term next year as well. Hey, Kyle, it's uh, Bob McKenzie. Um, let's switch gears a little bit. Um, right shot defenseman or a forward that can bang and score some goals, uh, which is the preference if you could add one before the deadline and how likely is it that you do add one? Uh, hey Bob, I um, you know I think we're, we're looking at all different avenues to improve our team and, and not just I, I know that uh, there's an appetite in, in the local market for a, a big bruising forward or a right shot defenseman and and uh, I hear that all the time but I, I think the reality is we're looking at any avenue we can to improve our team and I think the the coaching staff uh, led by Mike and, and the players have have earned that over the year I, I've, I've talked about that um, a lot uh, over the over the previous month and months uh, about the, the way that they've handled some of the uh, absence and distractions and, and injuries early in the year and and led our team to this point so I, I wouldn't say that we're, we're sold on on adding any one type of player or any one position of player anything we can do to to continue to improve our team we'll, we'll have a look at and uh, if you know we'll see how the group evolves here over the next um, you know week and a half and and uh, use that time to judge where we're at as well we're almost completely out of time but one quick final question what makes Austin Matthews an 11.634 million dollar a year player I think his uh, well, obviously number one is his goal scoring. Um, he scores at an elite, elite level, and uh, the, the other part of that is he's a he's a center. So you combine those two, uh, you know, sort of top end uh, elements to his game, and and uh, the work that he's been able to do here as a very young player uh, playing center for the Toronto Maple Leafs, um, and you know all that adds up to to make him someone who's certainly. Uh, certainly worth that, and, and we look forward to uh, enjoying that here in Toronto over the next uh, over the next five and a half seasons, and and uh, much more after that. All right, Kyle, thanks very much for this. I see they're turning the lights out behind you, so I know we're out of time. Thanks for this. We appreciate it. Congratulations on the Austin <laughs> thanks, Matthews guys. deal. Yeah, Kyle, enjoy the signing. <laughs> Thank you.